I think I even added some, you know, these little bullet holes on the sniper roost to look like someone was shooting at it. You see these little holes, quite fun. You know, create a story for yourself. When you're painting these paintings, especially if you're gonna take this to uh, maybe a three, four day painting where it gets ultra, ultra uh, detailed, you gotta create some kind of thing in your head so you don't get bored of these paintings. Seriously, you know, if you work on something for two, three days, you could get kind of boring on it because you're working on tiny little details. But if you create a little story in your head, it makes things a lot more fun to paint. So you could be like, okay, there's a sniper in here. He's been he's been camping in here for two days. So what kind of stuff would he have? You know, maybe he'll have some trash hanging out. He'll hang some stickers out here to warn the people. All sorts of stuff, and that actually becomes part of the design. Yeah, you are part of your painting. You are one of the actors or one of the players inside this scenario. So the more that kind of thinking you do, the easier it is to actually paint details and also make yourself um, continue on with the painting and know where to add the details. So. That's what these kind of little things were, because I felt like there wasn't enough destruction. You know, this is a fighting area where people are trying to bomb this scene here, and there's snipers up here. Obviously, there's some kind of war stuff going on. So let's adding a little bit more damage, more destruction. Okay, this texture is further uh, playing around with the idea, which I talked about in the earlier tutorials, in the other previous ones. You can go back and see how we add these things just to dirty up this building. This building looked too clean to me. Yeah. See, too clean. This is like modern, you know, which it was because the original building was from today. But we want to just boom, bring that in. Now it's all moldy. It's got plant growing. It's all crusty and all sorts of stuff, right? See this overshoot here? Quite easy to remove. Just kind of softly erase that out. I had a little bit on the previous texture as well. See here? Well, maybe not that one. One of these textures, which is right here. There's a heart line. Yeah, right there. Uh, you could leave it. Again, it's up to you for post apocalyptic kind of thing. Doesn't really show actually might add to it but quite easy to erase just take a soft brush gently brush on it boom 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 and then it's gone see now that lines disappeared let's put the other texture back on a little bit uh, copy the same texture and I put it onto this building as well so you see 30 up this building so now this entire scene looks more uh, overgrown and old I'm gonna take these plants out for a second just to show you what we've done here so if I take those plants out the plant was actually covering some of those texture seams, you see, if I put those in. But with it out, I can see that there's a clear um, seam line right here. So let's just erase that out to make it a little bit better. I'll put my opacity to 50%, controlled by me pressing the number 5 key. So my eraser, same thing. I don't have opacity on the eraser. I have to control it by hand. I like to manually control uh, these kind of things, but again, up to you. So I actually like it without the plants. Eh, on and off. I'll leave it on for now. And that's pretty much you know for the demo. I thought this was good enough to uh, get the point across. We could again check our value. So if we check our value, we can see that we have a number one read, highest contrast here, followed by here. So you can lead the eye in from here, but I think most people they'll actually their eyeballs start falling down to here. So you can just call this number one, number two, number one, number two. Either way, it does work. I think it's fine the way it is. So up to the viewer on how they want to interpret this image. But I think in most cases, because the high contrast and also the orange uh, value that's quite bright, that most people, their eyeball will fall to here and then fall up to here. Let's zoom in a little bit to see the kind of details that are in this image. So broken building, you know, it's got a cool details, blown up stuff, little sniper nest. You know, it's got this little climbing thing up here. This is actually when I added thought, thinking that if this guy gets in trouble, he can actually climb down and escape through here. That's what this little thing was for. So I just remember doing that uh, in class or something fun. Uh, kind of same same thing I was going to explain to you guys. You know, create a little story in your head that this guy's being shot at and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, a sniper, they're probably going to come up the building this way to get him. So if they're getting him, he needs to get out of here. Boom, 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 escape, and then out the uh, building. So. You know, it's just little fun stuff that nobody will actually know. You know what I'm saying? Most people, if you're looking at stuff like this, will never know. But these details add a certain level of belief to your paintings that even though they don't see it, they're going to feel it. Yeah? Right? And this layer, again, is our black and white layer. It doesn't do anything. This is the texture layer. I'll show the students how you can add this. We did that for a couple of the past tutorials, which is these kind of um, texture layers. Up to you if you want to add it or not. This painting actually doesn't really need it. On and off doesn't make too much of a difference. I want to show this layer. This is my perspective layer. I should have shown this probably in the very, very beginning. I always do this for photo plates, just an initial texture. Let me turn these on so this reads better. You can see here, these are the, the perspective lines that helps me see what the image is actually doing. So for building, for architecture, it's quite easy to find because the perspective is all inside it anyways. Right? It's very easy to find. But what I needed to do was actually find the horizon line, which is right here. Let me go to a different color here. 
horizon line is right here. Eh, it doesn't read either. Let's go to a neon green. Okay. All right, here we go. The horizon line is right here, and we could get that quite easily from the photograph. You can see this is starting to converge this way. This is flattened out. Images here starting to go this way. See that? Follow that window. So the horizon line is somewhere in this zone. You know, you can look at these pipes. Somewhere in here is the horizon line. Very easy to get. Whereas here, you can see these windows run this way. So obviously they're gonna try to hit the horizon somewhere in this zone in here. Yeah. If you're off here and there for images like this, doesn't really matter because we're doing a, cre uh, a world that's sort of destroyed. So even if you're off, a building's crooked, you could get away with it. But if this is a much tighter painting, for example, I need to add in a walkway from here to here in photorealism or a sign, I gotta make sure I find the proper perspective to put this in. All right? So if I'm adding, let me just draw some stuff in here. So if I added a building here, it'll look like that. If I add a secondary structure, it'll look like this. If I want to add a walkway from here to there, it'll look like this. And you have to do the only way to add this is to find the original perspective. Without that, you'll be just kind of bumming around guessing where things will go versus finding the perspective. You can see all these green objects are now in proper perspective. So you know, let's add a few more things. Right, quite easy. But doing doing stuff on top of buildings is quite easy because the perspective is kind of you know a big building is just a giant perspective grid, uh, especially things with windows on it. So that's all this layer did, just finding perspective. So let's turn all these back on to take a quick look where we were. This is my notes layer. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll zoom in one more time, show you guys what we've done here. So hopefully this uh, help you guys uh, who are interested in working off of photos. Uh, keep in mind, work off of your own photos, take your own pictures, try not to use other people's stuff. You know, keep it all yourself. This way, even though someone could say, hey, that's a photograph, because say, yeah, but I took the photograph. It's everything belongs to you. So keep that mentality in mind, especially if you're working professionally. You don't want to use other people's stuff. So next week, hopefully we'll do some maybe character related things. Um, got a couple emails asking for that so I'll go find something that I've done that's character related and uh, see you guys next week with that okay so keep the emails coming keep the positive comment uh, comments or you have questions whatever you want to say uh, post them and send it to us and uh, we'll address them uh, as uh, we have time so okay talk to you guys next week bye bye